And sometimes I think I'm in control And I act so foolishly Facing problems on my own I don't know what's best for me My mistakes at times disturb All the plans you have made Lord, keep me in your will So I won't be in your way And put me where you want If I should ask for things I want, just give me what I need. When I complain from time to time, forgive me, Lord, I pray, and keep me in your way. So I won't be in your way Remind me, Lord, I'm just a glove In which you place your hand Not my will, but yours be done Though I don't understand The best laid plans I made somehow always go astray. So keep me in your will, so I won't be in your way. And put me where you. If I should ask for things I want, just give me what I need. When I complain from time to time, forgive me, Lord, I pray. And keep me in your way. So I won't be in your way. Lord, keep me in your will. So I won't get in your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of the Living God. Thank you, Father. Oh, keep us in your will today, Father. Keep us in your will today, Father. Oh, just this lift your hands. Ask Him to lift you. Ask him to keep you in your will today, his will today.
Oh, Father, today have your way. Have your way, oh, Master. I love my son, you hold my heart. Oh, we give you praise, Lord Jesus. Father, that's our cry tonight, today, that we could be in the center of your perfect will, that we can walk in the center of that perfect will, O oh Father. Oh, Father, we worship you. Speak to thy people today, O oh God. Speak to thy people today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory to thy name. Yes, Master. Oh, what a sweet presence. You got the Bibles. Open with us to the book of Luke, chapter 17. Oh, thank you, Master. We're going to start with verse 11. Thank you, Master. That's my heart's cry today, is to be in the center. Of his perfect will. Yes. To be obedient to all that he would have for us to do. Oh, thank you, Lord. In the book of Luke, chapter 17, start with verse 11, if you would, let's stand for the reading of God's oh, word and remain standing as we pray. And it came to pass that he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were left, which had which did afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Please, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show, down, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass, as they went, they were clean. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and <coughs> said, Were there not ten? Clean, but where are the nine? There are not they are not found that return to give glory to God, save this place. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And he was uh, I have to stop the verse 19. Father, I thank you for your promises. I thank you for your word. Father, minister to us today in a special way. Have your way in this service, Father. Let everything be done for thy glory and thy honor. Father, we'll give you praise for what you're about to do. Speak to thy people today. Father, give us a word of comfort and encouragement. And we'll praise you for all things in the name of Christ. We pray and ask these things. Amen and amen. If you title your message, if you title your notes, if you do make notes, the title of this would most likely be an attitude of gratitude. We are living in a time and an age where people are very ungrateful. And as a matter of fact, that was one of the signs of the times I believe was mentioned in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, I believe, that it says that there were wise people that were ungrateful, that were unthankful. Yes. And we're living in a time today where it seems like the word thank you 
has escaped many people's vocabulary. Amen. They don't even know what it means anymore. Amen. They don't show things or anything like that. We see in our text today that Jesus is passing through Samaria and Galilee. He's headed to Jerusalem. Yes. It's about the end of his ministry when he would go up and he would also put his himself on the cross yes. as a sacrifice to mankind. Yes. As he is going through, he comes and he meets ten men to the left. Yes. Leprosy was a type of a, a symbol of sin. Yes. And there was no cure for it. You could not be clean. I mean, you, you could, there was really no cure for it. Amen. Leprosy was a devastating disease in that time. Yes. It separated you from your family, from your loved ones. Yes, it did. It made you live in isolation. Yes. It drove you away from everybody. Isn't that what sin does to us today? Amen. Yes. It separates us from our family. It gets us into a place of complete isolation. Yes. And there, I mean, we can't reach out to our loved ones. Amen. Like we ought to. Yes, it separates families. It really yes. does. Yes. Sin yes. causes so much holiday, yes, so much burden on people today. But these ten lepers, they begin to cry out to Jesus as he's passing through. I love the stories about Jesus as he passes through. Oh. When Jesus comes on the scene, things change. Amen. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. When Jesus comes on the scene, things will change if we will allow him. Yes. But Jesus is passing through and these ten lepers cry out, Master, heal Yes. Now, in this story, most of the time, Jesus, we read where Jesus laid his hands on people. He spoke to them, you know, he touched them, or whatever. Yes, he did. In this situation, we don't read that. Yes. From the way I read this, he turned, he looked at it, he goes, show yourself to the priests. Yes. Now, in that day, the priests were the doctors of the time. Yes. They were the ones who had to determine if you were clean. Oh, if you were still diseased or whatever. But he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. Yes. Now picture, if you will, here's ten men, they've been healed. Oh, <coughs> Excuse me, let me get this one. Oh, they are going their way. They are headed to, to Jerusalem to church. To show themselves to the priest. Yes. They're walking along and they're talking one to another. I mean, that, that's the only one that can fellowship one. Yes. And one probably does his hand up or something and he may stop but he begins to look and the others begin to look and they realize they've been healed yes. as they were going. Hallelujah. Many times God will move as we'll step it out of faith. So. As we obey in what Jesus has told them, they will heal. Many times the healing, the deliverance, the moving of God with a call when we begin yes. to step out and begin to walk and be obedient to what God has told us to do. Amen. It's only as we do that. Yes. But if you read that, it says there was ten. And one comes back and glorifies God. I'm, I'm going to leave him aside for just a minute. <coughs> there were nine of those that did. Now what were the excuses of these nine? The Bible don't really tell us. You know, it's interesting. I sometimes like to let my mind run. Well, I don't probably have the excuse. Well, I'm a Jew. I deserve this healing in the way, so God owed it to me, so. Yes. Bless him, Lord. It's got people like that. Amen. Somebody else probably had the attitude of, well, I was really feeling better anyway. I was always doing something bad, some bad or so. You know, Jesus just happened to speak it just at the right time that I was getting better. And so, I mean, you know, could be. Amen. Somebody else probably had the attitude, old oh, man, I've not seen my spouse, my wife, the kid, in so many years. I, I, I mean, God knows my heart, so I'm just going to go on home to my family. He knows I thank you. Listen, Lord. Amen. Somebody else, I mean, people may have different excuses. Yes. Why 
God they did not go back. And why they did not thank Yes. We're living in a time where people have forgotten how to be thankful. Amen. Amen. It is amazing. Yes. And, and yes. you still see it today. Yes. I, I know of a church. Well, there was a young person that the, the, the parent, the young person had a tumor. And they took, to, took the child to a doctor. This has been a few years back. And they told them, said, the tumor is growing, so they went to Birmingham, stupid to Montgomery, to the children's hospital. And they got them there. And, and I mean, they were asking everybody to pray. And they prayed. They get them there. And they find out that the tumor had stopped long and the green fangs had screw up and everything else. Now you would think that that family would come back rejoicing and pray to God. Yes. But they did. They come back and they said, oh, these doctors here are stupid. They don't know what they're talking about. Instead of giving glory to God, they wanted to decide that God really didn't move. Amen. So we need to be careful. Amen. When we begin, to, when we ask God to move, when He begins to move, we need to give Him praise and glory because God is still in the hidden business. We are living in a time where people have forgotten how to praise God. But in the scriptures that we're reading, it said that one of them was a Samaritan. This Samaritan, he stopped and he turned around and with a loud voice, he began to glorify and praise God. I can almost picture him as he comes to a stop here and then walks some distance from Jesus. He realizes he's healed. He turns around and running, praising Jesus and down to his feet saying, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for touching and healing we have got to keep back with what we are praised God despite the circumstances Amen. and despite the situations. Amen. 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 Oh, <coughs> no matter what we're I've been in doctor's office. I'll probably lift myself up. I have been in doctor's office where I've gotten a good report and I've told the doctor, excuse me just a minute. Give to my hands just begin to praise them right there. We gotta have that boldness, Lord. Lord we gotta get back to where we will begin to praise you. In spite of what others may think, in spite of what others may do, we must get back to the place uh, and cultivate an attitude uh, of gratitude uh, where we are thankful for God for all that He's doing. No matter what is happening, no matter what is going on. And when we get to that place, and we begin to praise him, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18, I believe it is, God said in every, Paul wrote, in every circumstance, give thanks unto God, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We must come to the place that we're willing to praise him in the very midst of our storm. It doesn't matter what is going on around us. Excuse me. When we get back to that place. But it is so easy. When we get down into the Holy Cross, it is so easy to forget about praising the Lord when everything is going wrong. It is so easy to get caught up in all the mumbo jumbo. We've got to get back to the place where we will begin to cry in the God with an attitude of gratitude and say, Thank you, Father, for moving. Things can always be wrong yes. than what they are. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Things can always be wrong yes. than what they are. Yes. I've heard of some stories I've seen many times where God has moved and intervened. So we've got to begin to believe God for the impossible. In, in Acts chapter 16, I'm not going to preach it again, but in Acts chapter 16, we see what Paul and Silas were in the prison. And uh, Acts 16, I believe it's 25, it says, And at midnight they prayed and sang praises yes. to God. Amen. 
We've got to get to where we can praise God yes, in the do. midst of our deepest storm. And when we begin to praise Him and give Him the praise that He deserves. In spite of the storm we'll face, He will move. But Jesus said, it's amazing that this man, this Samaritan, this nobody, if you will, the Jews in that day and age, <coughs> the Jews in that day and age, the, the, the Samaritans lived in the city of Samaria apart from the Jews. They were the offspring of Jews and Gentiles who had intermarried. Yes. And the Jews despised the Samaritans. Amen. And we despised them. And that's where the purpose of bringing it home. Just how bad they it, it, they despised. It would be about like, Lord, forgive me here, but down here in the south, uh, a black person and a white person intermarried and having children. And it, 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 I mean, those children suffer all kinds yeah. of, yes, uh, of, of persecution and everything yes, else. That is what the Samaritans went through. Yes. And it was, it was amazing, because the many Jews believed that they were the children of Abraham, they deserved them with that. This Samaritan cunt, who was a stranger, who was not even really considered a child of the king, yes. came and gave thanks to God. Amen. And when we long to give Amen. thanks, and the scripture says, it's amazing. But it, 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 it's amazing. The scripture says on down that Jesus said, it, it, Mark, Jesus marveled at this, but in 19 it says, and he said unto him, Jesus said unto the Milton, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. The others were healed. In that, the, the, uh, the leprosy was gone. But I picture something more happening to this America. Yeah. Leprosy, as I said, was a disease that actually caused you, your body to rot away. Yes. Your fingers would fall yes. off, your toes would fall off, your nose would eventually fall off, and it would cause you to rot away, to decay away. The others, <coughs> I believe, were healed. The Bible says they were healed. They, but they still Amen. missed their fingers, toes, while they were still alive. And, and I may be wrong on this, but, no. but I see in this ability when he was made home. The Bible says he was made home. His fingers, if they had fell off, were restored. Yes. His toes were restored. Yes. He will think about him with the story. And yes. not only that, but there was a deep healing oh, in that he was laid whole with Thank God. He received God's forgiveness. Yes. Praise Praising God will open doors. For we see the word of the Lord's open. And when we love to give God praise, in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of the circumstances, in the midst of our storms, yes. we will see God move. Yes. Amen. But too many people, Lee and I was discussing it on the way today, there's too many people make excuses. Oh, yes. Why they don't get in trouble. They get farther and farther away from God, even though God in His love allows things to come. Yes. They want to get farther and farther away. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
God is still in the healing business. Yes. If we were there to believe Him yes. and there to trust Him. Yes. If there will be a time we need to pray. Amen. It's the day. Amen. If there will be a time that we need to give Him glory. It's the day. Amen. If there will be a time that we need to call upon Him. It's the day. Yes. Church, we've got so much to say. Oh, as a matter of fact, Alabama right now is in the midst of a famine. We don't have no way. Could part of that be because we have gotten so far away yes. from what God has wanted us. Right. And God is trying to send the wake up call one more time to people. Yes. Could it be that we are in the midst of a famine of his word? And God is saying, call unto me, while you wait for it. Because the time is coming. We're not. We've got so much to be thankful for. Even in the midst of the famine, I believe most of us in here has had bread on our tables this Thanksgiving. Even in the midst of all that's going on, most of us have had plenty to eat. Amen. Yes. We've got so much to yes. be thankful for as Leanne begins to play. This is going to be on these altars. You go here to begin to praise him for all these times. Oh, Father, we love you. We want you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord.